Welcome back to Inova University. I'm Brad from the product team. Today we're going to be doing an installation of a UTM and the Inova 645 sender cable. The 645 sender cable includes a dial, the universal adapter ring, and the sensor cable needed to plug into a UTM. What I love about the UTM is its modularity, meaning that you can plug a variety of different sensors into it. The 645 being one, Rochester remote ready cables being another, metering, large dial, there's just so many applications that we can use to plug into the back in the A and B port. And that's why they typically are gonna to come to you unassembled because we'll send you a case of 50 UTM dialers, probably 50M mounting bases, and whatever sensor flavor or mix that you'd like to have installation wise. So today, we're gonna to be using the 645 sender cable to install on a Taylor type dial. This is actually very unique because we need to do a little bit of modification to the universal adapter ring that comes with the 645. And so I'll walk you through those steps. But the first one is to note what the tank level is on the existing dial. And I'm looking here and it looks like right about, I'm gonna say 70%. So I'm just gonna write that down so we can compare that with the post installation reading. You can write that on your work order. You can write it on uh, the box that the device came in. Notepad, sticky note, whatever you need. And so you may not know this, but on a Taylor type dial, the screw heads are actually enlarged and the screws don't actually penetrate the plastic. They actually sit over the top of a small lip and just press the dial down into place. That's oriented by an orientation pin in the brass of the gauge head itself. If you have any questions about what dial to use uh, when you are installing a tank monitor that doesn't have a remote ready dial installed already, just refer to the Innova dial replacement guide. So using the 645 universal uh, sender cable, we need to remove the tabs at the top and bottom that would be used in a Rochester Junior application. So a couple ways of doing this, obviously using a small pair of wire cutters would do it. The other way is just using a pair of pliers and bending the tabs back and forth until those pieces snap off. So when we go to reinstall this, we wanna make sure that we uh, take note of the needle reading on the gauge head itself, on the dial itself. Um, when these are stored in, in a box with many uh, sender cables or in a box with mounting magnets, the magnetic field of the needle can sometimes be pressed to a point where the needle won't reorient to the, the magnetic field in the gauge head. So I always like to, before I install the gauge head, just move the needle somewhere close to 50%. That way we know that the needle and the magnet can grab either direction, either high or low. And so what we want to do is set it into place and rotate just to make sure that the needle is moving. But in this case, we're going to align the gauge um, to basically line up where those plastic tabs would have been and almost like the screws would have gone through them. But again, on a tailor type gauge, the actual head of the screw is going to press down on the adapter ring on the outside of the 645. And again, be very careful with these screws. They are small. They do tend to disappear into the grass under a tank very easily. If you do need additional screws, those are parts that we at Innova sell because this has happened before to us. All right, so now I'm looking at the gauge and the reading here is just right about 70, so exactly where we wanna be with our note from the pre-installation dial. We're within 1%, actually it's at 69. So the next step is we're gonna install our sender cable into the A port on the back of the UTM. Because this is a single tank application, we won't be using the B port. So we wanna make sure that this uh, weather tight plug is installed in the B port. 
Sometimes they'll come installed in the unit itself. Sometimes they'll be in a bag of 50 in the case, but you wanna make sure that's installed so you protect the uh, pins that we're not using currently from corrosion in case in some point in the future we do wanna use those pins. So um, there is a bit of a trick. The first time you do it, you're gonna notice that it's extremely hard to press these, um, the female and male part of this connector together because the female portion of this is barbed, which means when you press it on, there's metal, um, uh, little metal spikes inside the connector that hold the sensor, sensor cable against those pins so it doesn't back itself off easily. So the way I like to do it is put my thumb on top, squeeze underneath and put my other thumb on top of that one and just press it all the way in twice really hard until I make sure that that O-ring is seated against the plastic seat. That way we have a watertight connection and we know it's all the way seated. Next step, very easy. We want to tip and install the mounting base on the back of the device. While I'm here, I'd like to comment a little bit about these holes in the back of the mounting plate. You might wonder why is that shaped concavely like that and have these little holes? Well, it's actually uh, a benefit that some people use to install these against plumbing. So what we wanna do is thread a zip tie through the top hole, out the bottom hole. We wanna do that on both top and bottom. And now we can use this to secure up against any plumbing that it'll fit just like this. You can fit on a relief valve and an underground tank. You can actually use it to install underneath the lid of an uh, underground you know, collar a lot of applications where we can use this really handy zip tie channel to keep the UTM in a place where it won't come into contact with the lid, with water, with any other sort of moving parts. In this case, we're not going to use it. We're going to use this magnetic <laughs> mount that is an extremely strong magnet. Um, it, you should have no problems at all with snow load or with uh, wind or anything like that knocking the UTM off of a tank. So what we want to do is click the um, top of the unit into place, rock it forward towards the bottom, and you're gonna feel a click as a little lever in there locks the mounting bracket into place. And then you secure it to the tank where approximately where you're gonna end up with the uh, device. In this case, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do an activation. Activation magnets, the first time you do this, it might be a little confusing. I like to think to myself, of count to six. Um, when you do that, about the six count, when you hold the magnetic next to it, the magnet next to it, you're gonna see the red light come on. And about a count to six, you're gonna see the bottom green light start flashing. That's our cue to remove the magnet and let the UTM do its activation sequence, which is gonna be a rapidly flashing red light, followed by a solid green once it has a successful connection. Usually takes 30 seconds to a minute. Um, if we get a green light, then back to red, that's the device choosing a different cellular carrier to try and connect. It can connect through the five major carriers in North America on the same report, AT&T, Verizon, US Cellular, Sprint, and T-Mobile. So now that we've got the solid green light, we know it's successfully connected. So we would finish the installation by verifying the tank level using our installation app. Uh, in this case, we're gonna move on to securing the cable and we'll show the installation app in another video. So. What we want to do when we're securing the cable, it's mostly just to protect the cable from getting pinched anywhere where the lid comes in contact with the tank. So I'm just going to, before I connect anything, I'm going to close the lid and figure out what my options are for mounting. In this case, and in most cases, you're going to zip tie the cable to the plumbing as it comes out of the hole on the side of the dome. Again, I like to tuck it under the regulator and just grab one zip tie, come under the plumbing, come on top, tighten it down nice and tight. Use our uh, cutting pliers to clear this off so it is a neat installation. Take all your trash with you. Don't leave a trash at a customer's house. And that's really all there is to it. We know that the tank is secure. The cable won't be cut by the wire. We know we have a successful installation because of the green light. We use our installation app to enter the, in the customer details if needed and we verified the tank level before we've left. That's all there is to it. Again, my name is Brad. Thanks for joining us at Nova University and we'll see you in the field.